Okay, in this video, we are doing Calc AB, problem set 56. Uh, the problems and a playlist are in the description below, and let's, uh, let's do it. Use the graph of f of x shown above to answer the questions. Number one, evaluate the integral from negative five to two of f of x dx. All right, so we're finding the area of the region bounded by the curve. Um, the whole thing is above the axis in this case, so we're just gonna find normal areas. Uh, I usually like chop it up. So here you can see I'm gonna chop it up into a rectangle, a triangle, a trapezoid, and a triangle. Um, do whatever's convenient for you. Uh, I basically end up counting boxes. So like here, that's three by two. Um, and then here it's gonna be half of three by two, so just three. This is gonna be a, a square, which is four, and then a triangle that's one, so overall we'll get five. Although I made it into a trapezoid. I still ended up doing a square and a triangle. It's up to you. Whatever makes the most sense to you, you can kind of go with it on these. Um, and then this is half of a three by two rectangle or a triangle that has an area of three. So now all we have to do is add these up. Eight and nine is 17. So overall, that's what we're getting. Now the next one is asking us the integral from negative five to six of f of x dx. We just did negative five to two. We know that that's 17. All we really need to do is figure out this negative region uh, to the right of two. So everything is below the axis, so we're gonna get negatives, but you just find the area basically the same way. So I'm gonna cut it up. Triangle, trapezoid, triangle. First triangle is two by negative three. So that's one half two times negative three is negative three. Then we have a square with an area of negative one, a triangle with an area of negative one, so negative two overall, and then half of a square of area one, so negative 0.5. So what we want to do is we want to um, take the 17 that we got from negative 5 to 2 and then add to that what we get from 2 to 6. So it's 17 and then minus 5.5, which I think is 11.5. All right, let's see what the next question is. Uh, given that g prime is f of x, find the points of inflection of g of x and justify it. All right, so g prime is f of x, which means... This is the graph of the derivative. If we're looking at the graph of the derivative, we can find the points of inflection of the original by looking for the relative extrema. So here, here, and here. And then we'll just write down our answer. So we're gonna say uh, points of inflection at negative two, zero, and four. And then my reasoning is gonna be because g prime equals f of x. I like to do that because I don't know if the person reading it will, know, like I don't wanna write just f of x has relative extrema. I wanna say like connect it to g prime because I'm talking about g. So g prime equals f of x has relative extrema at those points. I think that's good enough. Next problem, h double prime is f of x. Okay, so h double prime is f of x, which means f of x is the second derivative this time. So we're looking at the graph of the second derivative. We're looking for points of inflection. So this we would want where uh, there's a sign change, right? Where the graph of f goes from positive to negative or negative to positive. So there's really only one of those in this case. Uh, which is nice. So that'll be our point of inflection. And we'll just write up our solution. H of x has points of inflection, or point of inflection rather, at x equals two, because h double prime, which equals f of x, has a sign change there. I think that's all you need. All right. Uh, next question this is the last question. Given that w prime is f of x minus one, find and classify the critical points of w of x. So now you need to like think a little bit. This is actually a pretty common thing to do. Um, we need to know the critical point. So that would be where uh, w prime is equal to zero or does not exist. There's no place where w prime doesn't exist because if you take f of x and just shift it down one, it's still just a continuous function. So we're really only looking uh, for where w prime equals zero. Now start thinking it through. If w prime is zero, that means that f of x minus one is equal to zero because that's the definition of w prime. That means that f of x must equal one. So I need to figure out where this graph is equal to one. The easiest way to do that is to just add the horizontal line at y equals one and see where it hits. So to do that, it's not like a nice clean lattice point like where uh, the grid lines intersect. So I'm gonna do a little bit of basically algebra. I'm gonna write the equation of f, but only on the interval where I care, right? So really I only care somewhere between zero and two. Um, so let's write, the equation of this. We're looking for this point. Um, so this is three and then down three over two. So negative three halves x. Three minus three halves x. I want to know where that is equal to one. So I can just solve this equation. 
And it's like, you can sometimes look and kind of guess where it happens, but like, I really recommend that you always do the algebra because you never know. You never know if the answer is like a nice number or if the answer is like, I don't know, 11 seventeenths. You know, you, you can't be sure unless you actually like do some of the math. Uh, I'm going to subtract three, multiply by negative two, divide by three. I think we get X equals four thirds, which you can look at it and it's like, yeah, that kind of looks right. Um, looks like it's a third of the way between one and two, so sure. Um, so I get x equals four thirds. That's definitely my critical point. So I'm gonna write that down. W of x has a critical point at x equals four thirds. Now I need to try to classify this. So I need to work out if w prime is positive or negative, um, you know, is positive or negative to the left and then positive or negative to the right. I can see that there's gonna be a sign change. So if f of x is bigger than one, then f of x minus one will be positive. And you can see that on this interval, f of x is bigger. So when I subtract one, I still have a positive. So we are positive to the left. And then on the next interval, f of x is less than one. So when I do f of x minus one, I can get to get a negative. Um, so we can see that w prime is changing from positive to negative at that point. So that means there's a relative maximum. And that's what I'm going to write. So I'm going to say, since w prime changes positive to negative at x equals four thirds, w of x has a relative maximum at x equals four thirds. I don't know if I really fully have justified uh, the w prime changing positive to negative. I think I did um, by just stating it. You know, like I'm stating it and that must maybe mean that I know what I'm doing. Um, I'm not even sure what work I would show other than, um, maybe you could say w prime is positive because f of x is greater than one and w prime equals f of x minus one. That just seems like you're getting into territory of writing an awful lot. I think this is enough. Um, so I'm gonna end the problem set here. I hope this was helpful and good luck.